Michael with Carlson Equipment and Software. Uh, here to record a video today with the Carlson BRX6 Plus. We're going to do a base and rover setup. So I just wanted to walk through, I do this a lot on the phone with people, just walking through a basic setup, but I decided to go ahead and do a video, kind of give you guys a walkthrough example and step-by-step -step instructions. So first thing I've done here is I've got our base set up about 30 feet away and I got our rover here set up with the data collector. We're going to go to equipment, GPS base, and we're just going to walk through each tab. So on the first tab we have current and we have our Carlson BRX6. When you go to the comms tab, it says Bluetooth, Windows Mobile, and you'll see I already have my device here, but if this is a new setup, we're going to hit the gears next to that and we're going to click find device. It's going to look for any nearby Bluetooth device. And you should see it pull up the serial numbers of the units we're using here. It's looking for that Bluetooth out in the air. Go ahead and try it again, and it should pull it up on the second time, if it didn't on the first. Now you'll see we have our device listed in here on device. Next tab, we're gonna to go to receiver. On receiver, you have our antenna height, very important to select that, elevation mask, position rate. If you're setting this up for machine control, or it's going to be being set up on the same place and you want it to automatically start back at the same position it was last started, you can click this auto start base. We're not going to do that today. Go ahead and click advanced and you can have the audio mode set up for the base which we don't want and you can configure your constellations so you can see I've got them all turned on here. Next thing we're going to do is go to our RTK. Now, if you're running base rover with UHF radio, basic things you got to make sure you don't forget. Make sure you have your antenna, the UHF antennas, on the left side as you're facing the receiver. On the base, if you look in your kit, you'll see an aluminum rod that extends the radio antenna out and faces it up. That will give you an extra half mile range. Right now, with these radio uh, antennas facing down, you'll have a one mile, approximately a one mile range depending on conditions. So here we have internal UHF. We have our message types at an RTCM version 3.2. And we're gonna go ahead and hit these gears right here. This is gonna go ahead and start configuring the internal settings of the BRX6 Plus. Now have you noticed we have a blue light on that unit. The blue light, indicates which unit you're connected to. You will only be connected to one Bluetooth device at a time. Now, walking down through our settings, you see we have Satel, one watt. We have this set on channel one, 461 megahertz. If you want to change that, click here, type in your frequency, and it'll change that channel to whatever you want it to be on. You need to be between 450 and 470 megahertz. Set up multiple channels, click the drop down, and you can select any of those channels and put a different frequency on them. Or megahertz, excuse me. Channel spacing, we're going to set that on 12.5. Forward air correction is on, and that can be on or off, but they both have to match. We're going to go ahead and green check and configure that device. Now that we've got those settings in there, we're going to go ahead and green check. And the base is going to ask us, is this a new position or is this a known position? In this case, this is a new position. So we're going to click the read from GPS. If you have a known position, which you're going to be setting it up, click known position. And you have the option of a previously surveyed point, local coordinates of read, for, read from file. Read from file is if you've already created a reference file that it's going to load from. We're going to go back and hit read from GPS because we are sitting in an autonomous position. 
and we're just going to let it do 10 epics. One of the things I like to point out on this screen before you go on, it's very easy to click the big button that says continue with base setup. Right here you can click store in points list and you can pick a point ID for that base so that you can come back to that point later and you can put a description of base or whatever you want to call it. So now we stored that in our points list and now we can click continue with base setup. If you don't want to store it, you can just click yes and move on. Base configuration successful. All right, our base is now configured, and you'll notice you have three green lights on the top that are intermittently flashing. That lets you know that it is broadcasting. Now, if I hit save uh, settings to file, that's going to create that reference file that we just mentioned. Next step is now we're going to go in and configure our rover. Always take your time and walk through these settings, all three or four tabs, excuse me, to make sure that everything is correct. It will go back to the settings you last used, so sometimes we can get real quick, but if something has changed, maybe we were running on network and then switching back to base rover, you can get some settings mixed up. We're going to go to um, on the first tab here, Carlson, BRX6 Plus. We're going to go to the comms tab. And just like before, I've already located this device, so it's showing my serial number 3007 in the list. We're going to go to receiver. It's going to connect Bluetooth up to here, and you'll see the blue light come on, letting us know that we are connected to this device. It also checks our sensor calibration to make sure that we don't go on forward if we need to go ahead and calibrate. You notice on this screen, use IMU is on. That's your internal motion unit. If you don't have that checked on, it will not later give you the options to calibrate. There is another video that you can pull up on how to do those calibrations, but this is where that checkbox is. Again, we're gonna go to advanced. We're gonna click on enable sure fix. That utilizes both RTK engines. Click configure constellations, just making sure they're all on. And I have my audio mode on. You can have that on or off, just letting that lets the head do the talking versus your data collector. If you're running a surveyor two, it just beeps, it doesn't have the audio voice. So you may want to go ahead and turn that on your head if you want to be notified of whether you're in a fixed or float uh, position. I'm going to green check. Now we're going to go back to RTK. I have internal UHF. I'm going to hit the gears and we're going to match the settings that we already set on the base. Radios are simple. All you're doing is matching the settings between the two so that they can communicate. So we're going to set this to, again, Satel. This has a one watt radio. And you can see I played around with this and mixed up some settings so that we could change this as an example. So I already have channel 1, but the setting is wrong for that radio, so we're going to change it to 461. Channel spacing at 12.5, forward air correction is on. The device is configured. We're going to go ahead and green check. You notice there's another, everything else is grayed out here. Your message type is auto. It's automatically going to pick up what message type you used on the base. We're going to go ahead and green check. It's going to configure. Alright, it's talking to us and also my tablet is talking to us letting us know what our status is. On the top left, you see our status of yellow, meaning we are in float. We're waiting to receive those corrections. Now we've got a sure fix solution, and we're green up at the top. If you want to see more details, go to Monitor Skyplot. Monitor Skyplot will show you your status, your latency. It'll show us what your horizontals, verticals, position. 
want to go to your distance, go to reference, and you'll see we're 23.4 feet from the base. I do recommend being about 30 feet from the base when you set up. Uh, every once in a while you might stay in float because it's too close and it's trying to really push out that uh, broadcast. If you guys have any questions about base and rover setup, feel free to give me a call, 904-536-0470. If uh, this is something new to you and you want to check out our website, there's a lot of information as far as the specs and other videos regarding the VRX6 Plus on our website, carlsones.com. Thank you for watching.